Folks, welcome back. Hour number two of the Thursday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. Glad you are aboard. And uh, we are joined right now by the president of Family Research Council, Tony Perkins, joins us once again. Hey, Tony. Good afternoon, Steve. How are you? I am fine. Thank you for uh, coming back. Merry Christmas to you, and uh, uh, it'll be here before you know it, I guess. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying the, this time of year. I, I love uh, the, uh, the music, uh, the gifts, the, uh, and the cookies. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'm a cookie freak, and that's my problem. Uh, I actually laid off the cookies for eight straight days, cold turkey, and I lost about three and a half pounds. So uh, once I realized I could do that, I guess I figured it was okay to start eating cookies again. That's right. You can you can lay <laughs> off anytime. Why, right. why do that? Just keep eating. Crazy stuff. Anyway, all right. So let's talk. First of all, um, you were um, um, in Israel uh, with uh, with uh, a congressional delegation and visited Benjamin Netanyahu. Correct. We were. Uh, last month, uh, in a privately funded trip, we took over about eight members of Congress. Uh, this is our second time to go over. What we've been doing is working to build uh, relations between conservative members of Congress and uh, members of uh, the Israeli government, both the national and the, and the, the local uh, governments, uh, mayors and others there in, uh, in Israel. Has the President of the United States tied the hands, do you think, uh, in reality, of, uh, of, of, of the Prime Minister of Israel when it comes to, I mean, is, is it possible for him to, to launch a strike within this six-month period during this so-called interim agreement? I don't think he's tied his hand. I think he's made it more difficult for him to, uh, f for Benjamin uh, Netanyahu and, uh, and Israeli officials to operate. But I don't. I think the message is very clear that they they have been very clear in saying they reserve the right to protect Israel and Israel's interest. Uh, what was interesting to me is two years ago we were there just when the uh, the whole issue with Iran and uh, the status of their nuclear project uh, was becoming more well known. And, and the Israeli officials were a little more reserved in their criticism of the U.S., looking for help, and that was before the, the election. This time around, they were very uh, pointed in their criticism, basically saying, look, uh, Western solutions don't necessarily fit the problems here in the Middle East. We want the partnership and the support of the U.S., but we know best what it takes to deal in this environment and this arena. And we need the help of the U.S., but uh, we don't appreciate the, the, the imposition of some of the solutions that they're bringing to the table. Yeah. Do you think that the Senate uh, will, uh, in fact, impose uh, new sanctions or, uh, or, or let it ride for the six months and see where it, it comes out? Well, you know, it's interesting because we're right in the midst of uh, the Senate is uh, working on the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. That's been uh, kind of sidetracked a little bit. Uh, because of the effort to, to want to put amendments on, many of those dealing with Iran. The Democrats really, and the president doesn't want uh, Harry Reid and the president, I should say. There are some Democrats that are very clear about supporting Israel. The, the president and Harry Reid want to prevent uh, amendments to that so they don't get into the uh, Iran issue. Um, we're going to see if they do or not. But there are clearly some on both sides of the aisle that understand the significance of this problem and, and also the political pressure that comes to bear on this issue. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. I want you to listen to something that uh, John Boehner said today um, about um, it, it was revealed that, uh, the, uh, that the Republicans are having uh, uh, kind of uh, sessions on how to better uh, be more sensitive when dealing with women and women's issues. Here's what Boehner said. Well, I'm trying to get them to be a little more sensitive. You know, you look around uh, the Congress, uh, there are a lot more females in, in the Democrat Congress than there are in the Republican Congress. And, uh, you know, some of our members just aren't as sensitive as they ought to be. Do you believe that that's uh, playing into the hands of the Democrats or, uh, or, or you know, something left either in better internally? And, and, and he could have said something like when he was asked about it, something to the effect of, hey, you know, we, we'd like to be able to reach out more appropriately to all constituencies. But to say sometimes we're not as sensitive as we should be to women, especially with Hillary on the horizon, I, I just think he's setting himself up here. Well, it was interesting. I just came back from a, a couple of meetings on the Hill, uh, and I talked to some members who were in that session uh, about that. And here's what this is. This is a reaction to this uh, so-called war on women. Look, let me tell you where the war on women is being waged. It is the, the Democratic Party that's putting an ideological uh, emphasis on, like this, let's take, for instance, a contraceptive mandate that they're pushing, which is going to cost jobs. 
going to cost women the ability to provide for their families. It's going to take away their health care because they're putting organizations and businesses in a position of having to choose between their religious freedoms, their conscience, and providing health care for their workers. That Look, who needs to apologize for that are not Republicans. It's the Democrats. It's the president that's pushing this failed policy that's, that's kicking families off of the uh, uh, coverage from health care and, and potentially ending their jobs. Now, what do the Republicans have to apologize because they've been fighting that? I don't think they have anything to apologize for. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And you see, it, it, it really disappoints me when I hear Boehner say that. Boehner should have, should have said exactly what you have said. Um, exactly. And, and you could bring up the life issue, too, if you want, because they run away from that. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you, Boehner could have pointed to articles uh, written uh, quoting White House staff members over the years that it's a boys club, uh, that people, uh, women working in the White House make less than men. Right on down the list. But instead, oh, we're not as sensitive to women as we should be. And he leaves himself wide open. They're laughing at him on places like CNN now, giggling and chuckling. I just think it's a lose-lose strategy. Steve, what women are concerned about is what, 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 what mothers are concerned right, about. Less women in the workplace now than, than in many, many, many years. They're losing their jobs. They, they family, their, their husbands are losing their jobs. I mean, it's a disaster. And guess what's coming in the mailbox along with those Christmas cards? A cancellation notices for health care. Absolutely. And next That's year, 100 million of them, right? Yeah. So who's 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 waging a war on women and the things that women care about? Yeah. Well, I wish Boehner. I wish I wish I wish Boehner would listen to. He certainly listens to you more than to me. But I wish he would listen to somebody because I just think what he said today was pretty ridiculous. Um. Uh. Let Let's talk a little bit about a, a column you wrote. Um. About uh, the tide turning against marriage equality. Uh. Very interesting piece. Well, it's, it's it's real simple. It's the when you look uh, at the electoral map, you look across the country in the states that uh, there's the ability to turn this issue and uh, redefine natural marriage. The, the easy states are gone. They've they've gotten those uh, dozen or so easy states. Of course, you've had the courts weigh in in some cases. Um, now it becomes much more difficult. You get into states that already have marriage amendments on the ballots. You're going to not only have to convince people to, to vote to uh, redefine marriage, but you're going to have to convince them uh, to overturn a state constitution. The threshold is a lot higher in most cases. So it, it becomes much more difficult at this point. And I, I think in some ways it, uh, you're going to see a stalemate. Uh, because in addition to that, Steve, what you have coming is, uh, for instance, a case that's going to the Supreme Court. Uh, it is the case of uh, Elaine Photography yep. uh, that deals with the issue, this conflict between the rights of individuals, religious convictions, and those who want to redefine marriage. They wouldn't, they wouldn't photo photograph a, a, a lesbian wedding, um, and uh, they are, they're being uh, penalized for it. Right, in New Mexico. And yep. In fact, it was a, a commitment ceremony. They don't even have same-sex marriage right, right. in New Mexico. They refused to participate. They were fined by the state. For doing that, that there was a, a hearing yesterday in Colorado with a baker. Uh, that decision is expected later this week or next week. So that, as those issues become more prominent and people begin to realize this is not just about the marriage altar, but it really about fundamentally altering the cultural landscape of America. This process slows down. So, t Tony, we have 30 seconds, uh, but let me just ask you. So when people on the left say there's no, <laughs> there's no war on Christmas, there, not only is there a war on Christmas, but there's a war on, 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 on Christianity and religion, our religious freedom. Absolutely. And, and what we're going to have to come up with is a way to allow people to express their religious freedom, not within the four walls of a church, but as the founders envisioned, being able to live according to that faith. And that's what this administration has really had in the crosshairs, is driving that from the public square. Yeah. Tony, thank you so much. Uh, great to talk to you. Have a Merry Christmas. We'll speak to you next year. Thank you, Steve. You too. Thank you. Tony Perkins, ladies and gentlemen, Family Research Council president on the Steve Malzberg Show. When we come back, guess who's interviewing the president tonight? You want to hear his top 10 Obama uh, remarks? We got them for you. Chris Matthews, as you've never seen him before. I mean, as you've always seen him before. Steve Malzberg Show. The 